thousand miles and my gross on my 1099 was 330,000 and change. 330,000 gross last yes. year off of just 80,000 miles on this international. About 85,000, yes. I don't believe it, people. We're going to have to see some 1099s, so I apologize, but is that something that we might be able to get from you, brother? Absolutely. I've showed my other guy, Josue, that made over $549,000 uh, last year that he's going to, of course, gross. Uh, very curious what type of money you guys are making being brand new. So we wanted to share with you how much money we actually made doing the run that we did. So here's the actual pay statements, and I'll post, I'll put a picture of this so you can view it a little bit better. What's going on, Mother Truckers? One to the Asian My Show. I'm here with my guy, Adam. So, you know, we're going to go into the moving business. We're going to talk about how the hell him and his son are becoming movers like me, but they're doing it with absolutely no experience. There's a loophole, and maybe you could use that similar loophole too. Possibly. And maybe I'll help you with that loophole in the future as well. But, you know, Adam, why, why are you thinking about the movie industry already, you know, we talked off camera, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're doing other stuff. Uh, tell us about one of your businesses that you do, uh, your motorcycle business. I, I thought that one was super interesting. Yeah, so, um, you know, Extreme Bikes is my other company, and uh, we've been traveling around the country working motorcycle rallies, working on motorcycles, selling the Amzol products at the rallies, and it's been very good to us. Yeah. Um, but last year, with COVID happening, it, it kind of opened my eyes to a little bit of things. So um, in 2019, if I look at my gross sales for the year and compare them to, to 2020, now keep in mind, 2019, we did about 20 rallies. 2020, we did five. Mm. My net sales cut in half, 50%. You can imagine. But when it was all said and done, and you look at all the bills being paid, my profit was almost on par. It was just slightly lower really? than the previous year. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Sometimes we're, we're working ourselves to death, but we don't know that the places that are pulling us the most profit, that's great. But the other places that we're, we're working just as hard at, yeah. they're not pulling us profit, yeah. and it's almost like cannibalizing our own business. Yeah. Um, I was seeing that on paper there were some shows that if I took just the expenses for that show and the profit on that show, they were making money. Nice. But over the course of the year, that money got bled off to pay for this, pay for that. Yeah. And it turns out that being said and done, I wasn't making any money on those shows. Um, so the nice thing about the trucking industry is it goes year round. I keep in mind that business is seasonal. You know, come November, I'm done for the year. I don't start up again until March. So I got four months off every single year right. with nothing to do. Now, I know that that's a slow season in the moving industry, too. Right. But there's still work. It's just not as much work as right. paying work. So the supplement's good. So my thought is some of these shows that aren't doing good, instead of doing 20 shows a year, I'm going to do 8 to 10. The 8 or 10 really good shows that leave me good profit. And then in the other times, we're going to drive truck. What is going on, Mother Truckers? Welcome to the Asia My Show. I heard from my guy, Mikey, someone came all the way from Orlando, rented a car, drove out here and then I wasn't here yesterday because Tuesday, Tuesdays are my days off and uh, you actually stayed uh, another night. I, I did. I went ahead and booked a hotel, the Holiday Inn Express over there and stayed yeah. one more night. Just I was committed. I, I drove down here figured I, I got to meet with you. Man, so tell me a little bit about this because, you know, first thing people are going to think is who the hell would do that, man? So first off, you know, I appreciate you so much. No problem. You know, I, I never thought that we'd built a channel at the point where people would even want to drive anywhere, let alone, you know, from Orlando to here to see me. And, you know, for you guys to know, he was actually supposed to book a trip moving furniture all the way to Miami, but that got canceled. So you guys dropped off Correct. in Orlando, right? Correct. And so... You know, before we really get into this, I just want to let you mother truckers know that there's a lot of people that want to get into the moving industry. I've showed my my own pay stubs, my own paychecks. I've showed my friends where they're grossing three hundred thirty thousand dollars for work in like eight months. I've miles and my gross on my ten ninety nine was three hundred thirty thousand and change. Three hundred thirty thousand gross last yes. year off of just eighty thousand miles on this international. About eighty five thousand, yes. 
I don't believe it, people. We're going to have to see some 1099s, so I apologize. But is that something that we might be able to get from you, brother? Absolutely. I've showed my other guy, Josue, that made over $549,000 uh, last year that he's going to, of course, gross. $519,000, okay? We work for the same company. He's gonna pay taxes on, but that's with one truck. So I'm getting all these people, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're hitting me up all the time. Alex, how do I get in? And I always tell them, look, you know, you need uh, a year of driving experience, and you're gonna need a, at least a year of moving experience. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guys that watch the show that have 10, 20 years of, of driving experience, but they have no moving experience. And in the moving game, they want you to have moving experience. Well, do. you know. With with this scenario, it's a little bit different, right? And I had neither. So you had, you didn't have one year of moving. Nope. And you didn't have one uh, one year of uh, driving experience either. Not commercial. Commercial. So, you know, we're gonna find out through this conversation <laughs> how the hell you did it, so that maybe others can do it too. Yeah. So introduce yourself, brother. So my name's Adam Halstead, uh, and basically, short story: uh, my son and I decided to start a trucking business. Gotcha. Um, I had been thinking about it for years and just kind of procrastinated on it. And then uh, my son, who's now 22, like a year and a half ago, he came to me and said, you know, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of working for stupid people. I've seen you've been in, you know, self-employed all my life or all his life. You know, right. From his point of view, you know, I've, been, I've owned my own company for over 22 years now. Nice. Um, 98, 23 years. Yeah, 98, I started my own corporation. And uh, not truck driving, but doing other things. And, and yeah. it's actually progressed. It started as one thing, moved to another. So uh, he said, I think I want to get my CDL and drive truck. And uh, because I considered it before, but I kept procrastinating and putting it off in all honesty. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Because I'd already wanted to. And then when he came to me and said, let's do it, I was all in. Yeah, you know? so the first thing you were thinking was what type of trucking, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Um, now, I, I knew that trucking was somewhat in my blood. Uh, my grandfather retired from the Teamsters in 84. He drove from like the late 40s on up to 84. Yeah. Um, I've always loved trucks. I've had good friends that have been truck drivers. I'm, as a little kid, I used to climb up in trucks and pretend I was driving. You know, what I mean, just it, it, it's always been there, but it was kind of low key. And then I don't know, I just found a way to make it happen. So, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, how the hell did y'all get into the movie industry working with Beltman now, right? Yeah, with Beltman. Um, and with again, no experience. Well, and again, that's a little <laughs> bit of a long, long story. So, um, after my son told me that he wanted to start a trucking business, he wanted to be self employed. I was like, well, it's kind of hard to do without experience, you know, I mean, being one, just being a business owner and being a trucker and owning a trucking business, they're all three different things. Right. And um, so I just happened to be talking to one of my high school friends. Uh, she she started dating a trucker and uh, through talking with them, they were driving for university living in storage through Got North it. American. Got it. And uh, I told her kind of what we wanted to do. And then they said, well, why don't you come train with us? And now, at this time, all I had was my learner's permit. I didn't even have a CDL yet. My right. son had his because he actually went before I did to school. My schedule didn't allow me to go to school. So uh, they got me hired on with North American through University Moving and Storage. Where are they out of? Where are they out of? Uh, I want to say Ohio. Don't well, quote me on that. Right, right, right. Sure. Yeah. Would they take on more people or no? They probably would. Um, but yours was this very special. Mine, mine was special because I had a friend that was already driving for them. Right. So, you know, the application process for these things is tough. You know, you go online, you fill out the application, you right. hope somebody calls you. Well, because I already had a driver that was willing to put me in a truck with them, it, it pushed it through faster. So Josh was the driver's name. You know, he called his fleet manager. Fleet manager went directly to my application, pulled it out, and he got me hired on. Um, of course, I did 5,000 miles of training yep um, yep un, under him because i had no experience and i guess right. if you've got driving experience they don't require that right but i had zero commercial experience um so i, I got in and started driving with them and i only drove like a week and a half and then i had to come home to actually take my road test to get my cdl right because um, i had it scheduled already um and actually uh, had some other things you know, personal stuff to take care of too so I come home for that week, and when it's done, I call them back up and say, hey, I'm ready to get back in the truck. Let's finish the training. They had some stuff go south, and they were no longer contractors for North American Van Lines. Mm. So now I'm stuck with partial training and no driver. Um, and luckily, the fleet manager there um, at, at university knew a guy, but he was driving for Beltman. So they tried to hook me up, 
um, it, it still took months and months. I mean, this started in May of last year. Right. And I didn't actually get in another truck with somebody until December of last really? year. Really? Really? It, it took forever. Um, but basically, so they transfer companies. Uh, they find a, a gentleman named Marcel, um, and he's actually in some of my YouTube videos when I trained. Um, Marcel just lived in Atlanta. I live in Western North Carolina, so it was only like an hour and a half drive to get down to him. He just said, come on, man, jump in the truck. We'll do this. And I never met the guy before. Um, and just and you're you know, willing to do that? Yeah. Just uh, to it, learn. It was hard, you know. Um, so, I, so are you telling me the loophole is, you know, if there was a guy that had a uh, moving experience already mm -hmm. and they're willing to take on someone new, mm -hmm. they could do that. And yeah. you would just need how much? What's the requirements at that point? I, I think it's three to 5,000 miles in the driver's seat with a trainer in the passenger seat. Got it. Um, and, of course, you got to learn the industry, you know. Um, Moving isn't brain surgery, but there are certain techniques that you have to follow, and you know this. You know, so you yeah. don't damage people's furniture. Um, I mean, you've got to have a professional attitude. You can't go out there and act all ghetto in front of your customers and whatnot. So, um, but I've always been a businessman, so that part's okay. And and the moving, a lot of it's common sense. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you don't put glass stuff on the bottom and lead stuff on the top. You know, right. um, but. But there is is an art there to learn it. You know, I know a lot of drivers. They started on the dock, or they started, you know, as a helper or whatever, and they worked their way up. And, and that's they, not your situation. We just didn't do it. We got lucky. So, uh, for anyone that's watching this that is thinking about becoming a mover and making the type of paychecks that I was talking about and showing them that my friends were making, uh, I guess you could probably hit up some moving companies and see if any of their drivers there are willing to train you, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's a good possibility, and it's something that we're even thinking about doing in the future. Um, so, so we're owner operators at this point too. But the truck I have now is actually Marcel's truck, and I'm leasing it from Marcel, just like it. more of a rent, I guess. Um, right. There's no lease program. I, just, I give him 1,500 bucks a month. I use the truck. Got it. Um, so I'm thinking that once my son is finished training, because now he's got to do that 5,000 miles because he's a new driver also. So he's training under me, which is kind of crazy because I don't really have enough training yet. But I've always been a pretty good driver. Um, and I use common sense. Yeah. So, uh, in, in fact, I think right now he's over 3,500 miles. So by the time we're done with this trip and we get back home, he should be qualified. Want. And, and, and what's more important than the miles is that the trainer feels confident that you can drive the truck. Um, and my son is actually a really good driver as well. So I don't think there's any issue with that. So by the time we get back home from this trip, I get a load one tomorrow and take it to Virginia. And then, uh, and then we're just heading home and, uh, by the time we're done with that, he should be a full-fledged driver. And then either one of us can run the truck, or we can still team drive if we wanted to. Now, wasn't there a rule with North American that you need at least have your license for a year? Or no, it's not that. It's just 3,500 to 5,000 miles. I, I think if you're applying online and they don't know who you are, then if, you, if you get less than a year or two, they're probably not even going to consider you. Right, right, right. Again, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. And I happen to know somebody, so I kind of defeated all of those right. standard rules. I just got lucky. So just luck. I already see the title, like uh, literally like uh, no experience, even no CDL at the point. Yeah. And you were able to jump in with a, a permit and yeah. get your miles down yeah. and, and it could happen. You went back home, did your road test pass mm -hmm. and then you got in your 3,500, 5,000 miles yep. and then you lease a semi truck from the guy that you were yep. training with. Now we and, own a truck too. We just were doing some restoration on it before we put it on the road. Sure. So the, the, the rental is a temporary until the truck that we already own. Right. Is, is put into service. So. All right, everyone. Hamzo Adam here. Welcome back to the channel. I've hinted to it before, and now it's kind of official. This ugly yellow thing is now ours. Yeah, I know. It's yellow. But if those of you that remember when I first bought Goliath, it was yellow too. So I know how to fix yellow. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tour around this. And uh, I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I got a lot of work I want to do to this. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed on it before I can put it on the road. But all in all, it is a really good truck, and I got it for a really good deal. So it will, it's going to make sense for me to put the little bit of time and effort into this that it's going to take. Because I think it'll be a really good truck in the long run. So let me show you what it is. 1994 Kenworth T600. The engine in it is a Caterpillar 3406C with the 5EK prefix. Those of you that are into diesel engines know that is a very good engine. So I'm very, now, I am very, uh, very curious what type of money you guys are making being brand new. I mean, at the end of the day, how much uh, experience do you have under your belt now? So we, we contracted with Beltman as our own trucking company in 
the end of January. So we've really had February, March, and we're just at the beginning of April. So we're only two months in. Right? So two just months. Two months in. So Jan from really, so. Yeah, yeah my, we, we orientated the end of January up in Minnesota where they actually brought us to the corporate offices, showed us all the rules, and got to meet everybody. Wow. After that, it was like two weeks later, we, we actually got the lease set up on the truck and hooked up to our first trailer that they yeah. signed us and actually started pulling loads. Right. And how many loads have you pulled down? So we just finished our third trip. When I say trip, right. um, even though the last two trips have all been in one trip, we haven't gone home since, but they're titled as trips in the system. Um, and so far, each trip has profited us about $6,000. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Those of you that have been following along with our trucking adventure video, uh, know that Talon and I decided to start our own trucking business. We have no experience in the industry, uh, so we decided to become owner operators with zero experience, and we wanted to document our trials and tribulations along the way so that maybe others can learn from it. Uh, so in the past, we did our orientation with the Beltman Group after I finished my training, and we became contractors with Beltman Relocation Group, uh, which is a contractor for North American Van Lines. In, in February, we took our very first trip, and we finally got all the pay stubs for the trip. So we wanted to share with you how much money we actually made doing the run that we did. So here's the actual pay statements, and I'll post, I'll put a picture of this so you can view it a little bit better. Okay. Ballpark. Um, and each trip is about a week to 10 days long. So okay. um, it's not huge money just yet. We're starting slow, but we know the potential is there to make more. But still, if you bring $6,000 a week into the truck, that's right. not bad for starting out. Right. So So I, I with two months of experience, uh, you make about six grand profit uh, and three trips. So you're looking at about, yeah. you know, 18 grand. Yeah, yeah, a total. Um, now, the, the trip we just delivered on Monday, of course, that hasn't hit my settlement yet. But yeah. before that, for the first two trips, the total revenue to the truck was a little over $18,000. I know you drove like three hours yeah. out of your way. I mean, as a trucker, you know, you, you drop your shipment. Most guys aren't going to rent a car to come. Yeah. So... Uh, you know what what is the reason why did you feel like you had to drive you know and then i wasn't here and then you had to spend another yeah. night here so tell me well what was your thought process when we started this i didn't know anything about trucking like i said we were new so i just started doing a lot of research i watched youtube video after youtube video after youtube video trying to learn how to be a truck driver you know even even when i when i first had to learn how to downshift it to, to take a truck down a hill i was like how do i do that right you know right so um I'm, I'm Googling and watching, you know, YouTube videos, and I came across one of yours. Now, I was already contracted with North, not contracted, but I was already employed by North American as a trainee right. before I found you. But then when I found that you drove for North American also, I was yeah. like, all right, I got I to gotta keep an eye on what this guy's doing. I can yeah. learn a lot here. And then, uh, and this is, you know, last summer into the fall, you were still in the truck, actually, before you started uh, doing this stuff here a lot. And I was just like, all right, this, this guy's making money. Maybe there's potential there. And I just kept following along. And then you just started throwing out so much useful content that I was like kind of hooked, you know? No, I appreciate um, you, brother. There's three or four that I watch religiously, you know, YouTube channels that, that are really about showing people how to do things. Um, and that motivated my son and I to start our own YouTube channel as well. I thought that, That's you cool. know, a father-son team with zero experience going out there and starting a trucking company as owner-operators. Neither one of us have ever drove for anybody else before. Yeah. I thought that might be interesting, along with the other stuff. Now, my YouTube channel is not just trucking. I own four companies. Um, this is this is the, the most recent one, so we kind of dabble in, in everything there. Um, I'm an Amsoil dealer, so I sell Amsoil synthetic lubricants, and primarily we do that at motorcycle rallies. So by trade, I'm a motorcycle mechanic before we did the trucking thing. That's cool. Um, when I first wanted to start a YouTube channel, it was all about kind of showing the, the life of traveling around the country at yeah. motorcycle rallies. And in that is where I drive my other big truck called Goliath. I'll give you a picture of that. It's an 82 and a half foot long rig that I did not need a CDL to drive because it's registered as an RV. So the truck is 48 feet long, the trailer's 35 feet long, and that's what we use for the motorcycle rally circuit. And that's what I learned how to drive a truck in. That's cool. With zero experience. Um, just, I had a friend that, that was a retired driver and he kind of showed me the ropes real quick and then he bailed on me, left me to Sheesh. myself to drive it across the country. Sheesh. So again, YouTube saved me in learning how to shift things properly. Right, 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 right. right. Um, 
And then, uh, so that was the, the main focus of the YouTube channel in my mind when I decided I wanted to start one, but I procrastinated so long and never got started. And then when we started the trucking business, I was like, you know what, let's do it. So on my channel, you're going to get, which is called Amsoil Adam, by the way, you're going to get motorcycle content. You're going to get some dumb daily vlogs. Sometimes I don't have much content. So like yesterday, I didn't down here with a day with nothing to do. So I just drove around filming, you know, Fort Lauderdale beach and stuff like that. And that's cool. um, Just, just throwing stuff in there. So I had some content, Um, but motorcycles, trucking, um, and, and you know lubrication type stuff, Amsoil. Uh, I represent a company called Love Jugs as well, so we put some technical stuff on there. But, no, that's cool. So it's not just trucking. There's a lot of facets to it. So, but it's mostly trucking and motorcycles. You know, uh, just talking to you for five minutes, I could tell you have a really great entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, any any thoughts for people that are you know new to trucking, but you know, want to get into more business, more entrepreneurial things. Uh, is there one characteristics that even with all your businesses that you have, that you know, knowing these things will benefit you and make you more successful? Drive. You have to want to succeed. You have to really want it. Um, I run into a lot of people that have great ideas, right? And don't know how to chase the ideas. They don't know right. how to how to do it. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. I mean, I've made my share of mistakes. And right. And, and my potential may be greater than what I'm doing right now, but I'm still moving forward. Um, financially, at this point in my life, I'm the best place I've ever been. It's not where I want to be, so I'm still trying to move forward. Um, and, and one thing that you say to a lot of people, you never put all your eggs in one basket. So yeah. you have multiple streams, and that's why I own four businesses. You know, the idea is eventually my son will take the reins on this one pretty much by himself. You know, I'll still be an owner, but he's going to run the day-to-day operations because I have my other companies to run too, but I'm still going to make money on it. Yeah, um, and uh, so I actually love the driving. I love the traveling. You know, the motorcycle rally business. We get to travel there too. Yeah. Um, so to me, that's a motivation. I love seeing the country. I think every American should get out there and see their country. And so many people, they oh, grow in, in a this box. one spot. Yeah, they grow up one that's spot. It, that they yeah. don't know anything outside of Orlando or outside of New York or wherever it is that they're at. That's all they know. It's like the last 10, 12 years, we've been able to travel everywhere. And I've learned more traveling the country than I ever learned in school. Ain't that something? And I think it's I think it's amazing. No, that's cool. That's cool. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Mm-hmm.